I think it's a bit of a view that you keep saying it's her train set. Exactly. <laughs>
and lots of adrenaline in the blood nature's way to help their deed was heroic today's 39 hours walk through the same route was in a time of peace and comfort the setting is peaceful but the journey is no less tough you all who participated in the walk are no less heroes there is no better way of remembering the past than to suffer the walk in the same way may god bless you and us all as we still continue to make our life's journey together thank you and now i will hand over the time to the pastor of Kedi Church, Rukovilia Sacha, to say a word of prayer and a Bible reading. Good afternoon. I take this pleasure to welcome the 39 hours walking team. You have done a great job. Shall we all give a big applause to them? We will remember what you have done today. And I believe this has, in a way or the other, brought us together. As you remember the miles your grandfather, your great-grandfather has walked. It's our prayer that the Lord will bless you and as you walk this journey with a desire that the world will come to know that peace instead of war will triumph over the world. I think it is very fitting for us to listen to what Jesus has said as we sat together to remember the sacrifices, the grandfather, the great-grandfather, the warrior has done during the Second World War. John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, we believe this. Let's look to God in prayer. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we acknowledge you as our Father, as our King, in whom alone, Father, we can come together. Unity in diversity can only be found in you. And Lord, this afternoon, as we remember the sacrifices of the soldiers, we pray that, Father, you will hear our prayers. We pray that, Father, a heart's desire of the world peace father will come to know by the people all over the world father no wonder the world war ii has 
torn us apart in different parts of the world. The heart that we have for the country. Lord, I pray that, Father, you will hear our prayer and answer our prayer to the world that is crying, to the world that is torn apart by wars and by their differences. I pray that, oh Lord, that the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross will bring us together. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross will bring our differences together, where we will find solution instead of war, peace, instead of war, love, that Father, instead of fighting, instead of Father, or oh, having uh, war, we will have peace and love among us. We want to give thanks to you, Father, for bring the team safely to this place. We want to thank you for your protection over them as they walk 39 hours. I pray, O oh Lord, that Father, as you have brought them safely to this place, may their Father find rest and may they also, Father, find satisfaction in what they have done. And Father, through this, may the name of Jesus be glorified. As we come together in this manner, we give thanks to you. And Father, we glorify your name. As we gather together to spend some moment here, may your presence be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The person behind this dream today is none other than Charlotte Carty. Now the time is given to her to give a short message. Thank you very, thank you very much, Philly. I noticed again that somebody said a short message. I think people get to know that I talk too much. <laughs> but uh, I wanted to say thank you for the most extraordinary welcome. It's been a, a wonderful welcome here, uh, here in Kohima, at Jessame, at Corasom, at Fec, we have been warmly welcomed everywhere we have gone. I hope people who are traveling to this part of the world for the first time have seen what an amazing country this is, an amazing people who live here, and that they should be uh, celebrated. The Allies certainly celebrated the Nagas because they recognized how brave they were and that without their support, there would have been no Allied victory here at Kohima. My grandfather, Lieutenant Colonel William Felix Brown, in quarter of an hour, arrived in from Jessamy with some of his men who had been fighting there five days and nights. They covered the 77 miles from that village to Kohima in just 39 hours. I can tell you it's the hardest thing I have ever done when I tried to replicate that over the last couple of days. I think those who were able to take part in the walk would also say that it was an extremely difficult thing to do. We hadn't been fighting for five days and nights beforehand. We have nice trainers and blister packs, lots of blister packs. and. These men came back here and the first thing they did when they arrived at 3 p.m. on the 3rd of April, unlike me who went and had a delicious shower, they were given digging tools and were told to dig in. They had to face the advance of the Japanese. The Japanese arrived here on the 4th of April. Those were the, was the time that the first shots were exchanged here. And then they fought, the Assam Regiment fought here until they were relieved on the 20th of April. I just find that unbelievable and I think it's something we should all know and we should all remember and that's what a lot of this has been about making sure that the torch of remembrance is kept burning and handed down to the next generation there were some older folks such as myself on this walk but there were also uh, many many younger people too and it's wonderful to be able to share these stories with them so that they will also remember the great actions and bravery of our, our ancestors. <coughs> thank you so much to everybody who allowed this to take place. Thank you for today. Um, and we are so very grateful for the amazing welcome that we have. Thank you. I call upon the media, the pressmen, to come over here for the and interview. How did it feel like walking on the same path as your grandfather 80 years ago? 
It was very emotional. It was also very hard. <laughs> there is beautiful Naga landscapes, but my goodness, you like mountains. <laughs> it was it was wonderful to think that we were literally to the hour replicating what he and his men um, were doing 80 years ago, trying to make it as historically accurate as possible. Of course, we don't know exactly where they went, but we tried to make a um, a, 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 a good recreation, and it was very emotional for everybody involved. What can the younger generation learn from this walk, both in the UK and the I think that the younger generation can learn that remembering the past is very important and to try to take all these lessons into their future. Um, and they, the, the younger people of Nagaland need to recognize how amazing their country is and uh, to celebrate it. What message do you want to convey to the future generations to this commemorative walk to the world? This is a slight technical question. Could you possibly repeat the question? Uh, what message do we have for the future generations through this commemorative Oh, they should come to Nagaland and try and do a 39 hour walk. It's fantastic. I have one question. What motivated you or strike you? What thought came to your mind to embark on this journey? I knew that my grandfather had been involved at the Battle of Kahima, but I didn't know enormous amounts about it. There's not a lot written about the Indian... At the time I was looking um, first, there wasn't a huge amount written about the Indian regiment's um, involvement at the battle. And it sparked an interest that I then pursued. And I just wanted to, every, to highlight how amazing the Indian soldiers who were fighting in the Assam regiment were. Can you tell us a little bit about your friends who came with you? Uh, I had a conversation with few of them this day. All of them have a connection with the uh, World War history. So if you can tell me a little bit about your friends. Well, the first people I helped make sure they volunteered were my three children so that they had to come along and I thought that was very important that they would be able to celebrate their ancestor and uh, to learn about the battle here. Um, then I mentioned it to Mr. Lyman who um, remarkably said what a brilliant idea it was and that he'd love to come along and bring his son as well. Um, Rob knows Mark Slim very well and I might pass this one to Mark. Why did you come along Mark? I came along like most people because I have a strong family tie here. Uh, something I feel very proud and emotional about. And the thing that I really liked about my family attending this was that my two sons and my nephew, who all came and did the walk and completed it today, asked to come. I didn't ask them, I told them what I was doing. And they said, we have to be there, this is very special. Uh, and I think uh, that, I think, says a great deal. May I ask me to do some of the few questions? Sir, can you introduce yourself? Since you missed the introduction. Yes, please. Oh, okay. um, hello, my, uh, my name is Bertie. I'm the managing director of Sampan Travel. Hello, my name is Charlotte Carty, and I'm the granddaughter of Lieutenant Colonel William Felix Brown. My name is Dr. Robert Lyman. I'm the historian of the battle. My name is Mark Slim. I'm the chairman of the Burma Star Memorial Fund and the grandson of General Bill Slim, who was the commander of 14th Army. Madam, uh, last question. Uh, what's the total number? The number. How many of us? Twenty-six of us uh, travelled to Jasmine. Um, Twenty then took the trail back to Kohima, of which nineteen were walking. That is the issue of the how many needed. Needed. I'm going to actually Yeah. Right, I think. I think we're all afraid again. And they're the only shoes I can wear without pain. Beach <laughs> 
Madam, Madam, Jesus, you want to I don't know what I've done. Okay. No, no, no one can come here. No, no, I'm not short enough. No I think he's a very Okay, one photo here. One, two. Okay, one photo here.